Thank you for coming back to watch another episode on my Porsche 911 restoration project. This week, the paint prep continues. Notice how I didn't use the S word. I'm actually warming up and getting in the right mindset to do paint and body work. And I wanna get all the way around the car. Before I can do all the body work around the car, I need to put the fenders back on. But before I put the fenders back on, I need to treat some of these exposed areas in the inner fender area and also underneath the fenders, some of the undercoating was disturbed with the modifications I made. So I'm gonna be tackling those projects because it makes sense to do it now. Stay tuned. Garage time. Okay, to start with, this area right here has been temporarily primed with some rattle cam primer. This is where I removed the impact bumper brackets and there was a ton of spot welds that um, have been, you know, sort of scarred and then somewhat, some of the ones that I went through were filled up. So I'm going to uh, just do a real quick spot blast on this section to get it absolutely clean and then I'm gonna put on some real epoxy primer so this never rusts again. Okay, I knew there were no holes in this panel because I had to touch up a few of these with the TIG welder. Okay, I've, I've um, gone over this with the wax and grease remover and I've also feathered out the undercoated edges with some, some coarse paper, some leftover paper I had from the, uh, the filler. So it's uh, ready to paint. Now, instead of breaking out the spray gun for this small area, I am just gonna use a very cheap brush and uh, first uh, coat is kind of light, and then I really start to, to uh, build it up on the second and third coats so that this has some good protection. The nice thing about a brush is you can really work it into um, areas like these upside down areas. There's a couple grinding marks here, so I can work it into those holes and just you know really push it around. So I actually, I actually like this brush method. Um, the trick is just don't put it on too too heavy, especially the first coat. So I'm trying to, trying to spread it out. So any brush marks are not critical here because, well, A, it's gonna flow out pretty well to where they're almost invisible, and B, this is gonna get undercoated. Okay, I'm going around and checking for any bit of undercoating that'll come off with a scraper. If it looks cracked or it is, um, you know, flaking off, then I'm going to replace it. But the goal is not to strip the whole car and redo the undercoating. I mean, this is not a show car. So I just want to get it preserved. I'm just washing epoxy primer into those crevices so it can um, wick its way in between that hollow metal. <clears throat> okay, this is a very light coat here on the uh, rail. 
of epoxy primer. You can see the brush marks and uh, it's real thin. I just tried to do the first coat real thin. And hole here, which is for some, some washer clamps. I think I'm gonna weld that closed, so I left that open. Uh, I found another hole right here, which I'm going to weld a plate over because I'm not using the factory fuel filler. And I just touched up this area right here. I tried to feather <clears throat> the undercoating a little bit with um, my DA sander so I have a better chance of blending this in. So there's no more bare metal showing in this section. I got two coats now on the front uh, bumper bracket area. I'll come back with at least uh, another one or two coats on these rails to make sure they're fully rust proof. And then of course, I'm gonna weld this and put some more epoxy primer over that. Uh, and also, I have to put the, uh, the brake tab back on those, um, those pieces. Well, the welder's back out again. Okay, before I fill up this gas tank hole, I am going to take a rod and a piece of towel and try to um, coat the back side of this weld I just did right here for that screw hole and also the, um, the plate that was welded on the inside for the shock tower. This is a hollow cavity and so I'm gonna just load it up with epoxy primer. So I've been doing this all over the car and I just take a uh, piece of wire, this is bailing wire with a loop on the end, and then I just wrap a, uh, like a terry cloth towel around the end. And then I zip tie it on. The loop is there so that you don't end up losing the towel inside the hidden cavity, which could cause even more trouble. This is even smaller. This is a Q-tip um, wrapped around the end. This plate is a uh, very lightweight plate. It's only a cover. I only welded it in, in these four places. I don't see a real need to go all the way around it on this. Um, I'm gonna be uh, filling it with epoxy primer and also treating it um, with epoxy primer on the backside. So I can just use the epoxy primer and seam sealer around this 
and uh, call it good. There's no sense putting a lot of heat and distortion into this. It's uh, good enough for a cover. Okay, now I'm watching a video of myself so I know where to put this uh, brake bracket back on. Goes right there. So it's in this orientation um, and it's right at the height of that hump. There we go, it's not too bad. I'm just gonna grind the tops of those welds off and then um, get ready to put some more primer on that. Okay, I've just covered the car in plastic because I'm gonna switch gears now to work on the fender. I do need to put some primer on that new brake bracket or the one I re-welded back on and also that cover. So when I mix up some more primer for this, I'm just gonna put it on that. Okay, here's my passenger fender and the exterior has been stripped and, and treated with epoxy primer and it's looking okay. Um, everything is uh, sound, but the inside needs the same kind of treatment. You know, this is the area here where I put the, I filled in the gas filler. Um, that's an antenna hole that was filled in from the outside. I need to fill in the inside as well. And then over here is all the backdate parts. So this was done you know, quite some time ago and uh, also modified up here in the turn signal box area. So this needs to be uh, blasted and treated on the backside with epoxy primer. So all these details guys really take a lot of time. Um, you know, this is another detail that was missed when I made this bracket. Um, I was supposed to make a bracket that sort of closes this out like the factory did. And this is kind of the, the YouTube way. I mean, sometimes I, I, I'm spending time you know, finishing before the week's over, I have to spend time editing and these things get forgotten, but it's, I can't forget it anymore because this has to be finished before it can get painted. And that's what's holding me back. This week is just a lot of details about, you know, just getting things ready inside and out for paint. It takes time. Okay, that is just the very first pass of the heavy, you know, degreasing. So you can see the, the factory tan undercolor, undercoat color is coming through. And there's still some dirty spots, like down deep in these divots. Um, there's still more cleaning to be done, but this is a good start. Um, there's a couple areas like right here. This, this needs to be treated because there's uh, like a rock chip or something hit this, and it's starting to come apart. So I can peel this a little bit with my fingernail and that's a rusty you know metal underneath there so stuff like that needs to be fixed this is kind of interesting this is like a like it looks like a smear when they were putting the undercoating on they might have flicked it or something and uh, created a, a, a low spot i also found another hole here this is on the bottom of the fender right where the rocker panel is attached are those uh, those trim pieces there's a little tiny hole right there
Okay, I've ripped out all of the factory seam sealer in this area. This section is hollow, so you can access it through here. So I ripped it all out. I've um, treated all this area with, um, you know, the wire wheel and also scuffed it with the 80 grit. So that's ready for epoxy primer. There are a few areas here on top that are, are pitted. Um, here's, some, here's some pitting right here. So I'm going to take this outside and I'm gonna, you know, spot blast it. Maybe you can see right here, there's a little bit more pitting. So I will try to pull most of these dark areas out with the uh, spot blaster. But before I take it outside for blasting, I'm going to um, weld this hole right here. Remember, this is the antenna hole. I welded the outside um, and it's smooth. Now I'm gonna weld the inside. There's that hole welded up. <clears throat> I ended up using um, compressed air to kind of keep it cool instead of the aluminum plate, second thought. Um, it's not super flat. <clears throat> it's a little bit bulged up right here, but uh, I don't really care. I can't get to the backside to planish it flat. This is inner panel. I really don't care if it's distorted. And there's the backside. I didn't have anything, um, any heat marks come through. So that, that's nice. And I was able to touch it. It didn't even feel that hot. And then here's the back side of this hole welded up. There's the front side of that hole. I just TIG welded it shut. So I'm gonna grind that smooth and uh, move on. Okay, everywhere there is a clip, um, the undercoating was failing. So I had to wire brush it back until it stopped flaking off. But everywhere there was a bolt hole or um, attachment clip, that's where the rust is uh, starting to come in. I'm back inside now and uh, this has been um, completely cleaned on the back side, spot blasted. I hit some areas up here, just a little bit of pitting in these uh, hole areas. So now it's ready to wipe it down, um, rough it up again with some sandpaper and get ready for epoxy primer. Also I taped up this seam because the last thing I want to do is, uh, is pack sand up into this closed cavity. Um, I didn't really sandblast in this area, but any sort of debris that I might get in this way, um, I definitely didn't want to going in that patch or into that hollow cavity. Okay, I'm going to let that primer sit for a little bit so we can uh, really mix in uh, the two parts mixed together into one. Uh, so this week has been a lot of details, kind of got bogged down in details. You know, in my mind, I had thought I would have gotten both fenders done and on the car and blocking across the gaps. Um, but the reality is there was a few things left unfinished and this work just takes time. It would have been easy for me just to pressure wash the, uh, the under, underside of this car and throw a new coat of undercoating on it. But that's just, that's just not me. I mean, I realize this probably isn't the most inspiring video that I've done, but this is the reality about, um, you know, not taking shortcuts. And I guess the message for you this week is don't be afraid to do it right. And uh, for me, that was, you know, taking out the old um, seam sealer, getting in all the nooks and crannies, removing the rust, treating it with epoxy primer, and feeling confident about driving this in the ocean air someday soon. So thanks again for watching. Um, I'm gonna put that primer on and uh, be coming out over the weekend just to put coat after coat after coat on. 
But uh, thanks again for watching. Please don't forget, I'll have a link in the description or on my website, agaragetime.com. Please pick up some shirts and uh, support the channel. Thank you very much. Now I'm, I'm using gravity um, in, my, in my favor this time so I can get epoxy primer down into this hollow cavity. Just lifting it up so it can drip out the bottom too. There it is, dripping out. I'm going to do this multiple times so I don't need to try to kill it all in one. There's, that's what's dripped out. And let me get the light. You kind of see how the, the stuff is dripping right there in the hemmed area, right, right like a uh, seam sealer would. Um, I really like epoxy primer in this situation because it's going to dry really hard and it's going to keep this seam protected from the elements. This just one coat here, it's kind of, kind of sporadic, but this is going to do the job, I hope. Take care.